بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم This lecture is among one of the pediatric lectures in the extended module program intended for the medical students at Ain Shams Medical School. Neonatal anemia, bleeding, and screening. My name is Dr. Abir Safka, Professor of Pediatrics and Neonatology at Ain Shams University. Intended learning outcomes. By the end of this lecture, you should be able to know the commonest causes of anemia in the newborn, manage anemia in the newborn, know the commonest causes of bleeding in the newborn, understand hemorrhagic disease of the newborn, and get an idea about newborn screen. Anemia in the newborn is defined by less than normal range of hemoglobin for birth weight and postnatal age. A term called the blood hemoglobin is between 14 and 20 grams per deciliter, while hemoglobin levels in very low birth weight infants are 1 to 2 grams per deciliter below those at term. The incidence, it is the most common hematologic abnormality in the newborn. Causes of anemia in the newborn, either loss of red blood cells called hemorrhagic anemia, destruction of red blood cells called hemolytic anemia, and underproduction of red blood cells called hypoplastic anemia. We'll start with hemorrhagic anemia. This hemorrhage might happen in the antepartum periods as a proptial placenta, placenta previa, or twin-twin transfusion, or happen in the intrapartum periods because of C-section, traumatic rupture of the umbilical cord, or it might happen in the neonatal periods as in caput succedaneum, cephalhematoma, subgaleal hemorrhage, and intracranial hemorrhage. The clinical picture of hemorrhagic anemia, usually there is pallor but not associated with jaundice, tachypnea, vascular instability of two chalk. This picture shows twin-twin transfusion We'll see here, one of the twins is pletoric, while the other one is pale. This figure shows the neonatal exacranial and intracranial birth injuries. We can see here the caput succedaneum, its superficial swelling, its extra periosteal, occurs usually over the presenting part during delivery. The edema it may cross the suture line, and sometimes bleeding might happen inside this edema. We have another type of the neonatal hemorrhage, which is called kephal hematoma. Hemorrhage that occurs under the periosteum of the skull, it is subperiosteal. The area of swelling does not cross the suture line, usually firm swelling unilateral in 85% and resolves in 2 to 12 weeks. Another uh, type of hemorrhage is called subgaleal hemorrhage. It's due to rupture of the emissary veins during vacuum-assisted delivery. This bleeding occurs above the periosteum and it crosses the suture line. Other types of bleedings, we can see the epidural hemorrhage that's above the dura and subdural hematoma that's below the dura. This picture shows transcranial ultrasound of grade 4 intracranial hemorrhage in a newborn. The long arrow shows the bleeding. Number two, hemolytic anemia. Its causes are RH and EBO incompatibility. In the RH incompatibility, the mother is RH negative, while the baby is RH positive. In EBO incompatibility, the mother group O, while the baby A or B. G6PD deficiency, which is glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency. Hereditary spherocytosis, congenital torch infection. TOSH stands for toxoplasmosis, other infections, rubella, cytomegalovirus, and herpes simplex infection. The clinical picture of hemolytic anemia in the newborn appears jaundice, 
with pallor, tachypnea, and might be hepatosplenum major. Number three, hypoplastic anemia. Hypoplastic anemia might be a plastic anemia or one of the congenital causes called diamond black fan syndrome. In the hypoplastic anemia, there is depression of the bone marrow. The clinical picture, pallor without joints. Laboratory work for diagnosis of anemia in the newborn. We have to do the hemoglobin level, reticulocyte count, Holmes test, blood smear, blood type and RH, fly Bitki test, and other tests. This figure shows the differential diagnosis of anemia in the newborn. After diagnosing anemia in the newborn by hemoglobin level, we have to check the reticulocyte count. If the reticulocyte count is low, here in the right side of the slide, reticulocyte count low, which might be zero up to 2%. So in this case, means that there is bone marrow depression. We have to obtain bone marrow aspiration. The causes might be black diamond black fin syndrome and others. If the reticulocyte count is normal or elevated, like more than 5 to 10 percent, then we'll do the Combs test. If the Combs test is positive, so it is isoimmunization, like RH, EBO, and compatibility. If the Coombs test is negative, then we'll do blood smear. Blood smear might show specific red blood cell dysmorphology as leptocytes, spherocytes, and other morphology of the red blood cells. For example, if we get the spherocytes, we have to further do osmotic fragility test. Then back to blood smear. If the blood smear shows normal red blood cell morphology, then we'll check the bilirubin level. And if the patient has jaundice, so this might be due to infections, congenital enzymatic defects, or others. Infections like torch infections, congenital enzymatic defects like G6PD deficiency or pyruvate kinase deficiency, others like galactosine. Then the blood smear, if chose the normal red blood cell morphology, but the patient does not have jaundice, then we consider acute blood loss due to obstetric complications external or internal hemorrhage. And if the blood smear shows hypochromic microcytic red blood cells, so in this case, we have to think in chronic fetal maternal bleeding, chronic twin-to-twin -twin transfusion, alpha thalassemia trade oil, or gamma thalassemia. So in this case, we have to obtain hemoglobin electrophoresis and KB state. Management of Anemia in the newborn, usually by blood transfusion, exchange transfusion, iron, and folate. The second topic in this lecture is about bleeding disorders in the neonate. It's either inherited bleeding disorders or acquired. The inherited bleeding disorders as hemophilia A and B, von Willebrand disease, isolated factor 2, 7, 10, 8, or 13 deficiencies. As example of these disorders is bleeding due to hemophilia A and B. Usually there is family history of hemophilia or bleeding disorder, but we have to know that about one-third of these cases, they don't have a family history of hemophilia or bleeding disorder. The baby might present by oozing or hematoma following venipuncture or vitamin K intramuscular administration, prolonged bleeding following circumcision. We diagnose hemophilia A and B by prolonged 
PTT, normal PT and the platelets, and low factor 8 level in cases of hemophilia A, this in the neonatal period. Why hemophilia B? We have to check them, recheck the level after the neonatal period between 2 to 6 months. Management recombinant factor 8 or 9 according to the type of hemophilia and fresh frozen plasma. The second type of bleeding disorders is acquired bleeding disorders. Might be due to hemorrhagic disease of the newborn, disseminated intravascular coagulation, DIC, or liver disease. Hemorrhagic disease of the newborn. Definition, it's vitamin K deficiency bleeding in the newborn. Vitamin K dependent coagulation proteins are factors 2, 7, 9, 10, protein C and S. The presentation might be early in the first 24 hours. This usually happens in infants born to mothers on oral anticoagulants, anticonvulsants, or antituberculous treatment. The bleeding usually serious bleeding and intracranial hemorrhage. Classic disease. Classic disease, it happened between the first and seventh day after birth. The presentation, usually by GIT bleeding, intracranial hemorrhage, skin bruising, and the bleeding following circumcision. Late vitamin K deficiency bleeding in the newborn, it happens between the second and 12 weeks of life. Usually it happens in exclusively breastfed infant. Usually this infant did not receive vitamin K at birth or have a disease which interferes with absorption or supply of vitamin K as intestinal malabsorption defects, cholestatic jaundice, cystic fibrosis, alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency. The diagnosis of hemorrhagic disease of the newborn, we have to know that there is no routine test which is diagnostic, but we diagnosed by in finding increase in prothrombin time with normal platelets and fibrinogen levels. Second type of acquired bleeding in the newborn, disseminated intravascular coagulation. It is usually secondary manifestation of underlying problem such as bacterial or viral infection, asphyxia or necrosis. The diagnosis usually by clinically when we find the newborn L with finding thrombocytopenia, prolonged PT, PTT, reduced fibrinogen and increase in the D dimers. Management, we have to treat the underlying cause and give the patient plate transfusion or prior precipitate. Anticoagulant therapy is not generally helpful. Third cause of the acquired bleeding disorders in the newborn liver disease. Liver disease can result in low vitamin K dependent factors as factor 2, 7, 9 and 10. Also, factor 5, the cancer is affected in hepatic damage. The diagnosis occurs when we find elevated liver enzymes, direct hyperbilirubinemia, and increased ammonia concentration. We have to get an idea about the newborn screening. Usually, the aim of the newborn screening is to detect diseases before they become symptomatic. Early treatment may reduce mortality and morbidity in those patients. Examples of diseases to which a newborn screening is offered in some countries are inborn errors of metabolism as galactosemia, phenylketonuria, maple syrup urine disease, Endocrine disorders as primary congenital hypothyroidism, congenital adrenal hyperplasia, hemoglobinopathies, 
cystic fibrosis, immune deficiency, and critical congenital heart disease. The choice of the condition to be tested depends on, so every country has to decide which conditions should be included in the newborn screening. These choice should be incidence and severity of the condition within the population, availability of accurate screening tests, better outcome after detection, and also resources in that country for screening, diagnosis, and treatment. This is a case scenario of four-week-old newborn, blood group A positive, is a former 40 week gestational age and was born to an O positive mother and experienced hyperbilirubinemia, which required two days of phototherapy in the newborn nursery after birth. On examination, the infant has a grade 2 over 6 systolic ejection murmur and a heart rate of 170 beats per minute. The most likely diagnosis is you have to read all these choices, the five choices, think about them, and we'll discuss the answer in the face-to-face -face session. Please be ready with your questions in the next face-to-face -face session.